All right, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to, well, we're going to review how to simplify radical expressions and then learn how to multiply and divide them. Because I know we did a little bit with radicals in our last lesson, but I think some people were having trouble with the simplification, so we're going to actually review that before we go into multiplying and dividing. So just recall some review here. Uh, the square root of a number is a value whose square is equal to the given number. The cubic root is a value whose cube is equal to give a number. You can actually cross that right off. We don't need the cubic root, so we don't need that sentence right there. We're not going to be doing cubic roots uh, in this lesson. So for example, radical 25 equals 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. We should know what a square root is. So the definition of a square root is right here. And we don't really need, I mean, basically it's about equal factors. Radical r is defined as one of the two equal factors whose product is r. So because why is the square root of why is the square root of 25 5? Okay, why is that? Because if you factor 25, if you take 25 and you factor it, 5 times 5, right? When you whatever one of those is, whatever one of those pair of factors is, that is the square root by definition. All right, so what we're going to be doing to simplify radicals, and you may have learned this a different way last year, I'm going to show you a way that might be easier for you to factor and to break down these square roots. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to move to example one, and I'm going to show you now what this means. Five times radical 63 means five times, and I'm going to actually s switch to, uh, you don't have to erase that, I just want to switch to a smaller pen. It's going to be 5 times the square root of 63. What we're going to do is we're going to break down 63 however we want. Okay? You're going to work, um, first thing that comes to mind is to me is 9 times 7. Okay? You don't have to do 9 times 7. There may be other ways. Um, but 9, and you're going to keep factoring as much as you can. 7 cannot break down anymore. 9 breaks down to 3 times 3. Okay, 3 times 3. So I have 3 times 3 times 7. That's my prime factorization. So if you do a prime factorization and look for pairs that are equal, that's how you know what the square root is. So 63 became 9 times 7. 9 became 3 times 3. That means a 3 should be able to be brought out of the radical. So I'm going to write this as 5 times 3. The 5 was already there. The 3 now comes out of the radical. And the 7 is left over. 7 does not pair up with anything, so we're going to leave that in the radical for radical 7. So my final answer here is going to be 15 radical 7. So radical 63 simplified is 15 radical 7. Again, 5 times 3. And the 5 was already there. The 3 is, came from the 9. And then radical 7 is the leftover that we don't have. A, you can't take the square root of 7. So we're going to leave it there. So this is called simplest radical form. We're going to do that here, 98. Okay, 98. We can do 49 times 2. And then 49 can be broken down 7 times 7. And there I have a pair of 7s. Now, when I have a, a, um, a variable, say c to the fourth, I'm just going to write that out as c times c times c times c. c to the fourth is c times c times c times c. And I could pair up these c's and I could pair up these c's. So whenever you could pair them up, they're going to come out of the radical. So what can I take out of this radical? I could take out a 7. I could take out a c. And I could take out another c because I have two separate pairs. And then in the radical will stay what did not pair up with anything, and that's a 2. So this is going to be 7c squared, square root of 2. 7c squared radical 2 is going to be our simplest radical. This one here, 3 is already outside. So I'm not going to write that right now. I'm just going to break down the 200. So 200 is 100 times 2. And then 100 is 10 times 10. Now, the nice part is if you didn't do 100 times 2, say you did 50 times 4, the 50 would break down and the 4 would break down. You'd still get the same answer in the end. All right, so I have a 10 times 10. I'm going to circle that. 2 doesn't pair up. The
The y to the third is y, y, y. Okay, so now uh, pair of y's. A 2 and a y is left over that doesn't pair up. What paired up, and that's what comes out. So I already have a 3. I already have a 3. I take out a 10. I take out a y. Under my radical has to be whatever did not pair up, 2 and y. A 2 and a y left over. So this is 30 y radical 2y. Okay, 30y radical 2y. This one here, um, when you have a radical, you can break it up. So it'll be radical 4 over radical x to the fourth. Okay, now and I'm going to do them separately. This one is 2 times 2, right? So that's a pair. So that just becomes 2 with nothing left over. And then this one is x, 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 x. With nothing left over because those pair up and those pair up so this is 2 over remember it's over x x so 2 over x squared and there is no more radical there is no more radical because radical 4 is a perfect square and radical x to the fourth is also a perfect square because it paired up two x's two pairs of x's that came out as x squared there was nothing left over so nothing left on the radical we're going to now use we're going to when we do multiplying radicals we are going to have to simplify them at the end that's why we had to make sure we reviewed simplifying but what we're going to do here and you could ignore uh this lesson 22 here simplify the resulting this should be lesson or as we did above okay this is took this from another thing uh we did above never mind lesson 22 that's wrong all right, so uh, multiply the coefficients, then multiply the radic radicands, combine like terms, and then simplify the resulting radical as we did above. All right, so we're going to multiply. This is going to give us radical 20, y to the fourth. You just multiply everything under the radical. You don't have to have the same radical in order to multiply. And now we're going to simplify that just like we did above. 20 is 5 times 4, and then 4 is 2 times 2. I'm going to circle my twos. Y to the fourth is y, 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 y. Y, because there's four of them. All right, there's my pairs. Now what comes out? I could take out a two, and this is y squared, because there's two of them. And there's a five left over, so that five stays in the radical. So two y squared, y to the fifth would be my final answer there. This one here, we're going to multiply. We're going to get radical 18, a to the seventh. Okay, my 18 becomes 6 times 3. Um, and my 6 becomes three, uh, 2 times 3. So it's 2 times 3 times 3. That's my prime factorization. 2 times, see that? 2 times 3 times 3. Only my 3s can be circled for a pair to come out. A to the 7s is A, 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 A. Pair, pair, pair. There's three A's that can come out. That's A to the third, and there's a leftover A. So what comes out? Three comes out. A to the third comes out. And then in the radical is leftover a two and a leftover A. A leftover two and a leftover A stays in the radical. And we have three A to the third, radical two A. All right, now dividing, similar, except you're just going to divide them. Now this, uh, we're going to do put over each other. So see how it's divided by it? We're just going to put it over radical 18, just to write it that way. Okay, if you ever see division symbol, you just write it on top of each other. Now divide. 2, because that's a 1. 2 divided by 1 is just 2. And then 90 divided by 18 is just 5. So it's just 2 radical 5. You just divide the outsides and divide the insides. Very simple. Here, nothing on the outside to divide, so we're just going to divide the um, numbers. 108 divided by 6 is 18. A to the 6 divided by A to the 3rd, you should know from algebra, is A to the 3rd. And then this is B to the 6th. B to the 6th, what are you talking about? Well, B to the 9th over B to the 3rd is B to the 6th. You subtract the exponents. Ah, we haven't done that in a while. That's algebra, huh? All right, 9 minus 3 gives me 6. All right, so now I simplify. Same as above. This is going to be, I'm going to do 9 times 2 this time with 18. 
because I know 9 is 3 times 3. Get that pair of 3's. This is A, A, A. This is B, 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 B. Pair of B's, pair of B's, pair of B's, pair of A's. What comes out? A 3 comes out. A comes out. B to the third comes out. And then you have radical 2A left over. Radical 2A. So that's how you would divide and then simplify. Again, you always have to simplify after you multiply or divide. Now, consider this example. Radical 7 over radical 2. So now I'm going to go 7 divided by 2. 7 divided by 2. Does 2 go into 7? No. So that's, that's, that's what seems to be our problem here. 2 doesn't divide evenly into 7. Okay, so that's where this section comes from, rationalizing the denominator. How do we handle situations where the bottom number does not divide into the top number evenly? And you're going to see this as we move on in the course in the next few lessons. So this is how we're going to handle it. Okay, we are going to, oh, i got to get back to my, I'm going to do this shade here. All right, so what we're going to do to handle this situation is, we simply multiply by whatever's on the bottom, whatever the radical is on the bottom. You don't have to do the whole bottom, but just whatever the radical is. So we're going to multiply by radical 3. But because it's a fraction, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do the same thing to the top. Remember doing that? So whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So actually, you're going to multiply the bottom and the top of the fraction, the numerator and the denominator, by the, whatever, the, whatever the denominator is, whatever that radical is in the denominator. So that's going to give us uh, radical 42 over radical 9. And that's going to give us now radical 42 over 3, because radical 9 is just 3. OK? Now, we need to simplify this. So radical 42 needs to be simplified, just like we did above. So let's do, how about? Um, 14 times 4? Nope, that's not right. What am I doing? How about 21 times 2? And that's it. This is 7 times 3. And there is no pairs. There's no pairs. So see how there's no pairs there? 7 times 3 times 2, that's 42. 7, 3, 2, nothing pairs up. That means I cannot simplify. So that means it is in simplest form. If you got prime factors and nothing pairs up, that's how you know the radical can't be simplified anymore. Radical 42 over 3 is my final answer. This one here, again, we could break it up like we did above. So it's going to be radical 5 over radical 3. And then we're just going to do this the same as what we did over here. We're going to multiply by radical 3, multiply by radical 3, and that's going to give us radical 15 over radical 9, which is 3. All right. Now, I know radical 15 can't be simplified because it's only 5 times 3, and 5 and 3 don't pair up. All right, a couple more here, and then we're done. 2 radical 5 over 3 radical 8. We're going to ignore the 2 and the 3. We're just going to worry about the radical. So we're going to go radical 8. Radical 8. Multiply by radical 8 over radical 8. That's going to give me 2 radical 40. You only multiply the radicals. You don't multiply the 2 times the 8. Okay, Just the under the radicals. And this is going to give me 3 radical 64. Okay, So this is going to give me 2 radical 40 over 3 times. Now, radical 64 is just 8. So that's going to give me 2 radical 40 over 24. Now that's going to reduce to 2 over 24 reduces to 1 over 12. So that's radical 40 over 12. Now radical 40 breaks down because that's 4 times 10. And 4 gives me 2 times 2. So I do have a pair of 2s. So that's going to give me 2 radical 10 over 12. And now 2 over 12 reduces to 1 over 6. So this is radical 10 over 6. So there's a lot of reducing to do in this one. 
but it, I did get it down to radical 10 over 6. Remember, you can only reduce things that are outside the radical. You can only divide them if they're outside the radical. 2 over 12 became 1 over 6. All right, this one's going to be radical 2 over radical 3x. Again, we, do, we multiply by that radical. Even if it's a variable, doesn't matter. That's going to give us radical 6x over radical 9x squared. And this reduces, because I can just simplify, this is 3 times 3, right? And this is x times x. So I have a pair there. So that's going to give me radical 6x, I can't do anything with that, over 3x. And that's my final answer. I cannot do anything with, I cannot divide 6x by 3x because it's a radical 6x over just a regular 3x. So I'd have to stop there and that's as simple as I can get. What we're doing here is we're getting, we're getting it so that the denominator does not have a radical because when we leave final answers, we're not allowed to leave a radical in the denominator. There can be a radical on top. There's not allowed to be a radical in the bottom. So that's called rationalizing the denominator. We're making the denominator rational. We're, in other words, we're getting rid of that radical expression in the denominator. We're bringing it to the top. And that's what this does here in A, B, C, and D. All right, we'll see more of this in class tomorrow. I'll see you then.